What's going on everybody? Today we're gonna do some local work. Uh, this is gonna be something that I do pretty often. Uh, just kind of scoot around within a 150 mile radius of the house. Um, I've got a few direct customers that have reached out to me and uh, especially one for the way back. But this will be a way to kind of kill a day. I didn't really have a lot going on. Uh, nothing to carry me over the weekend. Today is Friday. Uh, so we're gonna grab three here in Murray and then we're gonna bring one at least back. I might get two though. I think there's another one I might look at if it's still there. I might go ahead and bring it back too. But easy day, easy work, and uh, we'll get going. All right, first pickup of the day figures this thing is a dud. It's actually an in op when it came here. It looks like a bad deal from an auction. Ended up buying it online and and through arbitration and everything it came in without a wheel on it this one's blown the spare they've got on it it's starting to come apart but uh this thing barely starts i just needed to get up on top of the trailer it unfortunately needs to go in the number one spot but i needed to just get up there and come off once i'll show you this guy i really don't want to idle it too much because <laughs> it's so bad uh, now it's saying, there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. This thing is a smoke show. And what's crazy is the smoke doesn't smell like oil or anything. It almost smells electrical. <laughs> so we are gonna jump this up here as fast as possible. No, won't let me go with the car because I had the door open. All right, this is gonna be a quick trip. That donut back there flat has me a little bit. Usually when it's squealing like that, it means that I've got a, a tire on the inside rail. <laughs> but I can't tell with this. <laughs> oh, don't like it. Okay, we made it. We made it. Whew, hate that. In up, big crack in the windshield. A lot of marking on this one. So somebody had asked the other day, if I could show a video on how to use the straps, the three-point straps and the lasso, which we'll do on this car. I always use lassos on my front car, on the front, and I, I actually strap everything backwards. I have every strap pulling out because of these flippers that you can't see. You're actually right in front of them. <laughs> but what you do, essentially, Either way you want to do it, pulling towards or pulling away, you'll have your actual ratchet attached to this strap. This strap is a three-point. It's going to have a sliding hook on the end. It's going to have a big seam right here that holds this block in here. This is a, it's just a rubber cleat, they call them. And it, it helps, instead of the strap, it, it helps the cleat bite into the tire. I guess it's, it's better on the tire end and your strap itself but it'll have three of these and then your end point so here's this is why they call them three point straps here's one the end of the ratchet one in the center and one at the end and what you're going to do is you're going to take all these there is an up and down side you want all the seams up so that everything's flat on the bottom and you're going to put that over the tire you can spread these blocks out if you want to uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But you're going to take this front strap and you're going to put it kind of as close to the tire as you want. Now these these cars move around. I could probably get it in that notch, but it'll be a pain getting it out. And this is close enough because really what you want it to do is start to kind of sandwich in on the front and the rear. That way it's not just a big horseshoe, but it's actually starting to double back. And that's going to, it's going to lock these tires in. Do 
please don't move. There's there's times to where I figured they would, and they still don't. Okay, bring you the back. Bring you the back so you can see this one. So you want to make sure everything's kind of center on the tire. Uh, sometimes that's just going to determine or be determined by your spacing on your trailer. Make sure everything's good. You're going to lock the back end close to the wheel. Watch the hooks though because they're actually pointed towards the tire. You can flip that if you want to, but I, this is going to cinch it more towards the tire, the strap itself. So just come one, one space back. And then come down here, put your last one in, and then you'll see that everything starts to cinch up. You'll see the tire moving some, and it's just like with any strapping or chaining, everybody's got their own preference on how tight something is. I've seen people hang off stuff to try to get it tight, but tight's tight, guys. That ain't going anywhere. I've done this hundreds of times, so uh, that's it. Don't break your stuff. Don't break the vehicle, you know, just get it tight. That's all there is to it. Now let's do the lasso. All right, now for the lasso. I know this is kind of a funky camera angle, but it's the only way I could see how I could get everything in frame. Uh, you're gonna start off. This is just, all it is is a, a strap with a, a ring on one end and nothing on the other. And you're gonna feed itself through the ring Make sure everything's tight. Like I said, I'm gonna pull back on this one. So I want, when I put this on here, and this tire's, well, I don't guess it is flat. I figured it was. Yeah, this thing's got belts showing all over the place. But anyway. So you're gonna to wanna to pretty much put your straps at 10 and two for a lasso and you want your strap to pull towards your ratchet. So you're gonna to want to come in, double back and pull towards and that's gonna keep this cinched up. If you try to just pull it this way, this is free to move around. So you wanna pull it the opposite. You want it to pretty much be in the center. And then you're gonna take your ratchet in. You're gonna take this and try not to get any twists in it. You're gonna take your tail through here get everything tight then you're gonna start cinching down on everything now this is a donut which is the reason I'm using a lasso back here uh, the tire strap is just these are way too narrow to be trusted the <laughs> strap to stay in the center and just like that okay this isn't as flat as I thought the bulge you want to have in here is somewhat but not extreme okay i've seen people try to tighten it all the way it's just you ain't got to do that like i said tight's tight that's not going anywhere i promise <laughs> feed your slack up through here get your tail up there double it back through one more time get everything to where it's not going to be blowing around lock this in there are there are notches in here make sure that these locks see how that didn't now it's locked it's not gonna move and that's it So we got these loaded up and uh, we're headed to Nashville now. I'm just outside of Clarksville. I'm gonna have to get fuel up here. Um, 
there's only a handful of places I like to fill up on this little stretch right here because of the money. You know, there's all the big truck stops at Oak Grove in Kentucky, but they're they're way too high. Max's fuel is okay, right across from the New Loves at exit 86, but um, I usually fuel at this twice daily up here at exit 31 on I-24 in Tennessee. It's, it's easy to get in and out of. I get a really decent discount on my fuel card, uh, which is an EFS card. I'm actually debating uh, really checking out other fuel cards right now just because of the way the price of fuel is. Um, I'm not looking for big discounts at the big chains. I usually don't participate there anyway, uh, aside from showers and sometimes a place to crash or some coffee, which is ridiculous anymore. Anyway, I don't know why. This seems to be uh, two things people don't really talk about a lot, and that's the price increase of diff over the last year. It's gone. I mean, it's that was normally for a while, you know, 249, and then just out of nowhere, it shot up to three bucks, and then three, 310, 320. It's just it's outrageous. I mean, it's like it's climbing, following the price of fuel, which is wild because it's not like that's. It, it has nothing to do with the price of diesel fuel or crude oil or anything, but kind of strange. It's just nickel and dime us to death, but. Another thing that has increased silently over the last while is coffee. Why on earth is for 20 ounces, 24 ounce coffee over $2 now at these big truck stops? It's ridiculous. That is flat out robbery. And uh, some people don't care because you get free fill ups, but I've got a 28 gallon tank and I can't get that credit because I can't get 50 gallons, so that means I pay cash for my showers, which is fine. It's a write-off. Um, but yeah, anyway, the price of coffee. Ridiculous. Straight up ridiculous. But anyway, thought I'd say that. We're headed to Nashville, and uh, I'm going to pop in and get fueled, and we'll be at our first of three auctions, and the last one I will actually drop one off and scoop up to bring back. So... This day ended up taking a nose dive uh, as far as <laughs> usefulness goes. Um, talked to so many people today. I talked to uh, every dealership I hit this morning. I personally knew somebody that was there. So there was three half hour, 45 minute conversations on each pickup this morning. And then uh, I get to the first auction and meet somebody from that saw me on YouTube you know, and, and said hi to them. And then the second auction I went to, met somebody that saw me on YouTube, talked to them for a little bit. And then eventually we ended up coming to the same auction, this last one here. And uh, hit I've hit like four traffic jams a day. Uh, I think I showed you a clip of just one there at the end. Uh, got dark quick today. And uh, what's funny is the, the guy, I think his name is uh, Tyler. It was Tyler, I think. So if you're watching this, thank you. 
but yeah, thank you. He, he actually drove me around the lot to help me look for my car. And it took us literally at least half an hour maybe to, to track it down. Once we finally did track it down, uh, it had three flat tires on it, which the semi truck next to me running, that you can probably hear right now, actually had, you know, the, the air hose. That's one thing I miss is the glad hand air hose. Uh, well, he had an air hose. He actually offered to let me use it because he heard me pulling up with the car. <laughs> um, so I didn't have to ask, you know, it's like everybody was super helpful today. It was nice talking to so many people. It did stretch the day out a ton, but that's fine. You know, it's like I, I help people with with the videos and I got a bunch of help today. So that, that, that worked out awesome. You know, it's, it's nice to be on the receiving end of that out of pure, you know, niceness. It, there's no incentive to that or anything. So I appreciate everybody helping me out today. Um, I hope this let you guys see a little bit of insight on what goes on. <laughs> uh, it's a long day, this quick, this quick day uh, turned into a long one, but for what it was, you know, the money's right. It was worth doing. I don't agree anything. So now I am going to head home and we'll see you guys next time. All right, I just wanted to show you guys from yesterday that I actually did deliver this car. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take it off here right now. And um, I've got you guys playing in the back. I'm doing a video about YouTube. And uh, you see my camera there by the tire. Anyway, I just wanted to show that I got this off of here and uh, it's the next morning. So all's well and good. I let the, the guy that I deal with here know ahead of time and uh, he's perfectly fine with that. I've delivered several cars here. But anyway, let's get it off here.